Some consider Venice being the most important tourist destination in the world. So, on your marks, get set, go! A flight should be the easiest way to reach Venice within reasonable time. For example, international connections are available from Montreal and Toronto when flying with a Transat, New York with Delta Airlines, Dubai with Emirates, Moscow with Aeroflot and Paris, which is connected by Air France. If your plane is approaching Venice from the north, you possibly will be able to enjoy the beautiful Alps panorama right underneath your seat. Depending on your airline, you will either land at the airport of Treviso or the official Marco Polo airport. To reach the city center of Venice, you will have to cross the Ponte della Libertà, a 2.4 mile long road bridge connecting Venice to the mainland in the city of Mestre. As railroad tickets are very affordable in Italy, the St. Lucia train station will be the best entrance to the city. The popularity of Venice has led to high hotel rates, so you better check in on the mainland and choose a 20-minute train ride. Venice is considered to be one of the largest car-free areas, so get ready to discover the variety of water streets, canals, palaces and narrow streets by boat or your own feet. Although this sounds hard, you'll be able to admire scenic views like this one from the Ponte alla Academia bridge. The most common mean of transportation is the gondola and it's well known all over the world. High demand has made the prices for a 40-minute ride rise up to 80 euro without any kind of music. If you wish to have a little more entertainment, prepare to pay 150 euro for an all-inclusive package. Welcome to the heart of Venice, the magnificent St. Mark's Square. This principal public place consists out of the main piazza and the small piazzetta, which leads to the open lagoon and the beautiful Palazzo Ducale. This used to be the residence of the supreme authority, the Doge, who resides here until the fall of the Republic in 1797. After stealing the supposed relics of St. Mark the Evangelist during a crusade, Venetian salesmen built up the St. Mark's Basilica, now marking the second highest building, right followed by the St. Mark's Campanile, which overlooks the lagoon with its 323 feet. If you can afford, enjoy a classic coffee at St. Mark's Square for about 6 euro. If you're looking for a nice souvenir, watch out for special drawings with collages of canals and the typical gondolas. Venetian masks, usually worn at the Carnival of Venice, could also hit the bullseye. Venice is entirely surrounded by water, so you're highly recommended to do a boat tour along the Canal Grande at least once while you stay here. If you can't afford a gondola ride, switch over to the water buses called Vaporetti or Bateo by the locals. A single ride on a water bus line will cost you 6 euro 50, so you better choose a flat rate ticket which is available for multiple time periods. When a boat is approaching the station, always check the availability of seats on the upper deck as the interior view of a water bus may spoil your experience. My special recommendation for you? Ride on the Canal Grande right before sunset towards the Rialto Bridge. Enjoy these pictures.
If you can't get enough of typical Venetian sites, have a look at the small island of Murano, which is located about one mile north of Venice. It can only be reached by boat, for example the Vaporetto DM line, which connects Murano and the main railway station in about 20 minutes. The small island is well known for its high quality glass making and gaining reputation all over the world for centuries. If you're interested in handcrafted masterpieces and avoid the cheap crappy fake products, you will find chandeliers and jewelry made of pure glass as well as glass figures in all shapes within everyone's price range. But nevertheless also mind the architectural attractions on Murano while strolling along the trails beside the beaten tracks.